So, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis, and today uh, I'll make a presentation for you. It's my first presentation on Jenkins conference. I know you are you all are very tired already, so this won't be a complicated presentation. But I hope uh, some of you will find uh, a useful case in this. So today I'll tell you, tell you about the concept which we've invented in Yandex. Yandex is a big search engine company in Russia. Uh, the concept about how do we use and how do we handle and deploy uh, multi-node environments with Jenkins. Uh, because uh, in default way, uh, it can't be done. So, uh, moreover, we have developed a plugin for Jenkins, so uh, you, can, you all can join to contribute to it, to use it, and so on. And uh, in this presentation, I'll show you how to configure it, how to use it, and what profit it gives. So, let's start. But first, I'll, uh, let's remember the prehistory, yeah? How do we come to this life? Uh, so, the common use case of any progress is you have the job to be done, uh, you have the slave which can do this job, and you must have someone to handle the slave to do this job. So, uh, coming back to an IT world, uh, when I first started my career like eight years ago in a company as a quality assurance automation engineer, I came to for my, to my work, and they said me, test the system, please. It was my quest, it was the task that I had to do, I had to learn to do. So, the quest uh, nowadays is rather easy. It's obvious because uh, everybody already got used to it, uh, and it consists of the following se steps. Uh, you have some nodes, hardware, uh, inside your data center at uh, your office or somewhere. You have to deploy your system to this node somehow. You have to uh, test this system automatically somehow. You must get results. If you're very lucky, you also can have some cloud provider which will uh, help you to get these environments, uh, these nodes, uh, and uh, make it clear for you. So the solution, as I already said, is rather obvious today. Uh, for cloud providers, we can use different things like Amazon, OpenStack, Docker, and so on and so forth. For deployment, uh, we, for example, use JCloud's plugin. You also can use Docker Cloud plugin for Jenkins and different deployment tools like Chef, Salt, Ansible, and so on. There are lots of them also. Uh, for test, uh, talking about test uh, and the results uh, frameworks, there are PyTest, TestNG frameworks, Allure framework, uh, XUnit, and so on. Uh, so I think that... Uh, my, many of you use these tools or some of these tools uh, or it's a rather similar uh, flow. Uh, so in this case, it works rather simply. Uh, you, take the, you take Jenkins, Jenkins attach a slave to Jenkins, uh, Jenkins takes the slave for the job, deploys the system, uh, runs tests, uh, collect, collects results, uh, and uh, you just get your results and send it to your manager and uh, the Jenkins uh, meanwhile uh, shuts, uh, shuts the slave down or sends it uh, back to the free slaves pool. This is uh, a way when uh, this process perfectly fits with one slave. You don't have to do anything else. It works out of the box. But what if uh, the system can't be deployed or the job can't be done using only one slave? Because uh, since recently, the world has changed greatly and now the system gets bigger. Uh, they uh, evolve, they need uh, many nodes, uh, high load systems and so on. So, uh, talking about the real life nowadays, life, when I came to Yandex three years ago, again as a lead uh, quality assurance automation engineer, uh, I got to the department of Yandex Media Advertising Technologies. And uh, uh, for the first time, uh, they gave me the same task, task which I used, uh, I already got used to, I got it like eight years ago. Uh, they said me, test this system, please. I, with the additional requirements of uh, that I need to automate everything. I need to make auto-build process, deployment, testing. Uh, we need to implement continuous integration process. We need to support green trunk and so on. But anyway, I thought that uh, it will be rather easy because I know the tools, I know the concept. I will use again Jenkins, JClouds, attached slaves and so on. Uh, but when I started to explore the system, I understood that uh, the system consists of the following components. First components, there are front-end UI and API com APIs. Uh, those uh, have, to, have uh, to be deployed on different nodes. Uh, they have to be uh, behind the balancer node because this is a high-load system which uh, like handles uh, uh, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of RPS. 
the next component is advertising management system, which you can have, where you can handle your advertising campaigns, uh, pay your bills, and so on. Choose what, which banners to show to clients. Uh, the second component, the third component is ad advertising selection engine, which uh, decides uh, in real time uh, which banner will be shown to each client or customer uh, who is viewing uh, the web page. Uh, we also have ad storage, which storages all the billions and billions of banners uh, which we have. And we also have uh, machine learning systems which uh, can make social demographic predictions about users so they can tell like who you are by your uh, behavior in the internet. Like you're a man, a uh, woman, you, can, you love cats, uh, dogs, and so on. Uh, all of these components are rather big. None of them fits into one slave. So we had to do something with this because uh, we have uh, a stack which we know, we know how to use it, we get used to it, but uh, uh, the system doesn't fit to it. Uh, and we don't want to change to anything else. Yes, we like Jenkins, uh, we like Gclouds, we, like, uh, we have OpenStack in the uh, company and uh, why shouldn't we use it? So, uh, we thought uh, a little, and the first obvious solution, which was really not a solution which came to our mind, was that uh, we take Jenkins, we get a slave uh, for the job with the usual, uh, with the usual wor workflow, like with Gclouds from, the cloud, from OpenStack. Uh, then we use that slave as a launch pad, and uh, we should somehow get m some more cloud nodes, like uh, uh, manually or not manually, of course not manually. Uh, and we use the slave, in, which is in the Jenkins, as a launch pad. We download tests there, we download uh, installation uh, deployment tool there, and it then connects uh, to other slaves, which we somehow de have deployed, and uh, tests and performs that job. But this is really not a solution we, because uh, of several reasons. First of all, we are lazy. Uh, this solution uh, implies that we have to uh, do lots of things. Uh, we have to implement lots of uh, algorithms and tools which are not already implemented. Uh, because we like reason, we don't want to code my, as much. Uh, so, first one is that we, in this case, we should have separate node manage, nodes management, as I already said. Uh, we can't do this in Jenkins because Jenkins can't make several slaves. Uh, we have to do something. Of course, we have uh, OpenStack. We can somehow script uh, those uh, things. But uh, uh, in this case, if we write... Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we have to implement the separate node management uh, tools. But in this case, we do not reuse Gclouds plugin again. So, we are just re-implementing the code that already exists. Uh, and uh, that's strange. Uh, and we get, moreover, we get lack of visibility because uh, in the previous case, in usual work workflow, uh, we have like uh, visibility of all uh, processes and components which go, uh, which happen in our uh, workflow. Inside Jenkins, we have logs, we have uh, lists of nodes and or slaves, so which we have, we have configuration, we have uh, like everything inside Jenkins. We don't need, do not need to go somewhere else to see what's happening. But in this case, we should go to like OpenStack control panel to see logs of our custom tool and so on and so forth. And more, we do not have uh, like uh, understanding of how much slaves do we have uh, right now, right from the Jenkins UI. We have to go somewhere else. So uh, the next uh, idea which came to us to us was a several that we can make several slaves per job, like uh, implement something inside Jenkins that will allow us to uh, attach several slaves to one job. But uh, when we've uh, searched, uh, searched uh, or list through the code of Jenkins, we thought a bit more. We understood that in this case, we should have to refactor lots of core features inside Jenkins. Uh, this is not really. Uh, easy to do, to do this uh, with plugin. Uh, so we should have uh, to fork Jenkins or to uh, rework a core uh, to support uh, to supply backward compatibility. And this is uh, also a huge job and 
as I already said, we are lazy, we didn't want to do this. So the final uh, idea that emerged uh, to, uh, to us was that why not make, uh, why not allow uh, a slave to really consist of several nodes? Because uh, in this case, everything is easy. Jenkins already has all uh, handling algorithms, all uh, management soft software and all management UI, which uh, applies to slaves. And we just uh, will, uh, implement another layer which will be called like compound slave uh, and uh, which, will be cons which will consist of just several no uh, nodes. So this is the final solution, uh, the final idea which we, which we took and we've developed this plugin so today uh, I'm going to tell you about this. So about features. First of all, as I already said, this, uh, the main feature of this thing, it allows you grouping just usual nodes uh, inside the compound slave. Uh, here uh, you can do this with, uh, in two ways. You can just attach uh, some nodes uh, as a slave to Jenkins, as you usually do this uh, manually, and then manually create a compound slave, which will then be used uh, for any job you want. But uh, as I already said, we like automation. Uh, yeah, we have to do continuous integration, and that's one. There is a second way. This plugin can work over. Uh, to, this plugin can create compound slaves from the cloud, from really any uh, plugin, any other plugin which is re uh, created uh, using a cloud interface in Jenkins. This is the Docker Cloud, as I already said, J Cloud plugin, or any other custom plugin which uses clouds cloud interface inside Jenkins. So, uh, moreover, it allows you to use labels from the cloud plugin. If you uh, tell me how many people know how to, for example, configure J clouds or Docker cloud plugin. Not many, okay, I'll tell a bit more. Uh, so, when you use a cloud plugin in Jenkins, like J clouds, uh, you do the following. You have uh, inside OpenStack, Jclouds creates uh, uses uh, we use Jclouds with OpenStack Cloud. Say the OpenStack, you create like uh, images and uh, node uh, how to say um, node shapes, which uh, say how much memory the node have, uh, how much disk space, and so on. And then inside Jenkins, uh, in on configuration page of Jclouds plugin, you say that uh, this is the name of my uh, virtual uh, node, like node from OpenStack. And then you say that under this label, uh, you should provision this shape and this image, like a uh, uh, small node of uh, 4 GB memory, 10 GB disk space, and uh, with Ubuntu installed, for example. This you, you call it uh, with a name, the name is a label. Then you just go to a job and restrict uh, that this job can be run only one label. I'll show this uh, in the demo in, uh, at the end of the presentation, so if you do not, uh, get, haven't get it, uh, don't bother about it. So, uh, our uh, compound slave plugin allows you to create a compound slave from, the cl uh, from other cloud uh, plugins uh, using labels which you've already configured in these plugins. Like you say, I want, uh, I want to have a compound slave consisting of three nodes, uh, which one will be small node, medium node, and a large node, and all of these, these are labels, and all of these labels are already configured inside. So you just uh, do not have to reconfigure anything you have already installed. You just st uh, set up our plugin and just uh, use already, config already existing configuration. So, and you also can, uh, say how much uh, uh, of which label, how, mu um, how much nodes of which label to provision inside the compound slave. This is rather easy. And the uh, next feature is that uh, you uh, must somehow differ nodes uh, inside the compound slave so you can uh, do different operations on them. For example, if inside the compound slave you have, you told that I want to create uh, three nodes, uh, three similar nodes, so maybe then you would like to uh, execute a shell script on one of them, then another shell script on the, uh, on the second, and uh, uh, third shell script on the third. So you somehow must uh, uh, distinguish them uh, so to be handle to handle the situation. And for this uh, we have roles mechanism. You just uh, configure some roles, uh, for example, database. Uh, 
front end, UI role, and so on. And then when you can create a compound slave, when you configure a compound slave template, template you just say which role and how much nodes of each role you want to provision. So uh, at this time, uh, nothing to tell here more because it's rather easy. I'll just show you a demo. Uh, first part of the demo will be an offline demo. I have already everything pre-configured, and then if you have some, much, some more time, I can show you how it goes online, if the Wi-Fi allows me. So, one moment, I'll just reconfigure my monitor. Is it readable? Yeah, great. So, uh, this is, uh, I just skipped some st steps. This is a uh, Jenkins configuration page. Uh, you already have, uh, our plugin is already open source and it's already in the main Jenkins update site. So I want, uh, there will be a link in the end of the presentation. I won't show you, I think you all know how to install new plugins. So you just go to update center and just click install. So here the plugin is already installed. We just uh, start uh, shift down to the compound slaves, first compound slaves uh, part. Uh, here you can configure sub slave roles. Uh, we have here a role root, front end role, database role, back end role, and so on. Uh, the second field, uh, I think we'll hide it behind advanced. Uh, it's just default uh, label for all. I'll tell you a bit later which, which, what is that. Just don't bother, you can, cannot feel this, may not feel this. So we've configured some roles. A root role is a predefined role which is uh, like a um, management machine. You can, for example, uh, download some tools there, run tests from this node, uh, run deployment tool from this node, and so on. This is uh, a service node, uh, but it's needed in almost each uh, installation. Other roles are just for the system you are going to deploy. So this is okay, we are going down. Uh, I also he have a jclouds cloud here configured. So it's a uh, as I already said, this is service information to the open stack keys. <laughs> They're not real. Don't bother. So here I have uh, two types of nodes pre-configured. I have a trusty small node with Ubuntu trust and uh, on a small uh, shape of, it's, I don't remember, it's like 8 GB memory and some amount of this space. And they have the second label, which is trusty medium. The same again, Ubuntu trusty, but uh, on a, a little bit bigger shape, which has 16 GB memory. So this is jclouds plugin. This is how it's used uh, without a compound cloud. And in the end, we can create a compound, whoa, sorry. Uh, in the end, we can create a compound cloud. There is a compound cloud section. Uh, you just uh, specify the name of this compound. You specify max instances, so which will be can be created through this cloud. Retry timeout, and uh, that's all. Then you uh, are going to create uh, deployed configurations. Uh, these are the templates of your compound slaves. For example, I have here one template. It's called a test compound, and it consists of uh, one root node, root role node, uh, which is based on a trusty medium uh, image, and I want one, only one root node. I don't need more of them. I, for example, have a high load system. I will deploy a high load system, so I need two front ends. So here it's specified that I want to deploy two uh, trusty small images under the role of front end. And they have one database, so it's Rather small, one trusty small image. So this is a real case, for example. This can be a real case. You'll have two front ends on a different node. So you have one database and you have a service node from which you'll run your tests or do something else, collect results or analyze something. That's all. That's all configuration about this plugin. After this, you click Save and then you can uh, go to the job. I'll show it uh, and attach this. This is label. This is... Uh, label which can be uh, attached to some job. And the job uh, during the start will create these things. Uh, but uh, here is my job. It's a test compound job. Let's see uh, on the configuration page of this job. So uh, first, this is a general project group. So first of all that I've done, I say 
I want to re restrict where this project can be run. And uh, here I just post the uh, label of the compound cl cloud template that I've created uh, because I know that it's needed for me. And then I have to, in each job, I have to execute something to run some tools to execute some shell scripts. And this is uh, how everything gets uh, into the job configuration page from the plugin. You uh, have in the build steps, you now have additional step which is named run something on a sub node uh, because the job already knows that uh, you assigned the compound slave template to, to it. So first of all, which I will do is that on a root node, uh, I will execute a shell script uh, which will first of all, this don't bother about it, these are just printing, you'll see it. Uh, I'll execute uname minus a, to each, so you can see on each node that this is a separate node. I'll the, then ping uh, uh, front, first front end. Uh, by the way, here you can see that there is a placeholder. The plugins, uh, the plugin uh, allows to use you such uh, placeholders to get IP addre addresses of uh, each node inside the compound slave. Uh, works, it works like uh, front end. It's the role. Uh, of the node one, it's the number of the node inside this role. For example, I said I have two front ends, and here I can ping two different front ends. Like it looks like this: ping front end one IP, ping uh, front end two IP. This is the first step of my job. Let's see. I have a local radio of the job, so I'll just uh, show you how it looks like. Whoa, sorry. So what do we have here? First of all, when I start my job, uh, we can see that we are already building remotely on a test compound. Uh, this, is, uh, this thing consists of four nodes, as I've already said. They all have different IP addresses. Uh, they have different uh, ID, IDs. And here you can see that, yeah, really, we have root node like trusty medium. All others are small. And the first shell script executing is we can see it here. So we tried this. This is a root node. It executes. We see that there is a, an ID of the node. So uh, lately, uh, there will be different IDs. Then it executes the ping commands. Uh, first, it pings the first front end, which has an IP ending on 24691. And then it pings from the root node. All this execution happens on the root node. It pings first front end, and then it pings the second front end. Front ends are available. Uh, everything is OK, as you can see here. So uh, this is inside one cloud, and these nodes are available from each other. Uh, so next one. Uh, then, for example, I have to, uh, I have, I want to execute something on the front end nodes, and then I'll see. I, you can see here the, the, the next field, uh, the uh, sub slave number within role. And here it is everyone. So uh, you don't have to uh, enumerate a single shell script uh, over different nodes if you want to execute this shell script on, inside some role. You, I just say that I want to execute this shell script on each node inside the front end role. And this is also rather easy. It says your name minus A, pings root node, and pings the database IP from each of two front end nodes. So let's see how it happens. First of all, you can see that this is a front end ID ending on EB1. And then it pings the root node, and then it pings the database. And also, as I already said, uh, it will do this from both front ends. So we have the second part of this. We have, we found us again on another front end. This is, you can see this is different. EB1 and F93. And it does, does the same. It pings the root node and it pings the database. They also are both uh, uh, connected. So, and uh, at last, uh, this is just to show you that this field is also working. Uh, I want to execute uh, uh, to ping front end one from front end two and vice versa. So, I say that from first front end, I want to ping the second front end. And from second front end, I want to ping the first front end. And this happens 
This is front end one, ping in second front end, it's okay. This is front end two, ping in first front end. Uh, like, you see that IPs are different and everything is okay. So it's rather easy, uh, as I already said. This uh, allows you to use all uh, algorithms in Sonic Jenkins, but uh, let's see one more thing. Uh, I've told you about the visibility of uh, all these nodes inside Jenkins. So they're all offline because I'm not connected uh, to my OpenStack, but never mind. Here you can see number of um, nodes, uh, usual slaves, and one compound slave. Yeah, I know there is a problem with this uh, representation because uh, it's rather hard to re-implement this table, but uh, we can see it in another place. Here you can see we have a G Cloud compound, test compound, 17, and we have three nodes attached to it. This one, which is a part of G Cloud compound 17, this one, which is also a part of it, and these two things, well, these two things, which are also part of G Cloud compound. So uh, it's visible here. These nodes are permanently uh, blocked, so no other job takes them for execution. Uh, and uh, this is the main compound slave, which is used for uh, execution of jobs. As I already said, we also can uh, create compound slaves manually. So you just have to, uh, sorry, you just have to create additional nodes, like from OpenStack, there is a cloud, for, uh, there is button just provision via G clouds, for example. I click, I tell that I want to provision trusty small, trusty medium manually. Then when they get provisioned here, you just go to create a new node, uh, like manual com compound. And we say that this is a multi-computer slave. Okay. Here you can add different nodes, like to this thing, it's 70A, and for example, 604. We click Save. Here you see that the manual compound is created, uh, and like these two nodes, 604 and 70A, are part of manual compound. Uh, this is uh, like, uh, everything about the demonstration. Uh, if you want, I can show you, try to show you a live demo, but if not, you can, who is interested, you can come to me later and I'll show you how it works in real time with our OpenStack, if the Wi-Fi is okay. Should I, so, should I do this? No? Okay, uh, get back to my presentation. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Let it be this way. So, uh, here, you, as you can see, that uh, the core features of this plugin is that uh, we've reused uh, built in slave management of Jenkins. Uh, we didn't have to uh, go somewhere else outside Jenkins to create uh, slaves, to group them, or something like this. And we uh, reused the built in job slave provisioning algorithm. So I just, uh, as usually, tell job the label of the compound slave I want to use, and it automatically creates all the compound slaves from the G using the G Cloud uh, interface. And uh, the visibility. Built-in dashboards, built-in job steps configuration. I did uh, everything uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, the workflow. You uh, all uh, get used to. You, I used uh, shell scripting. I used to execute uh, steps, uh, and I used the usual usual dashboard of Jenkins uh, to see how many nodes I have to group them or to do something like this. So uh, I know this is uh, like not uh, some big uh, tool uh, which allows you to uh, automate your deployment uh, to totally or to do some great things, but uh, this is a rather small thing that can, this can quickly allow you to get use of multi-node environments if you need this. We use this, we do not use this for production at Yandex because uh, at production we have uh, like uh, 
uh, hundreds of nodes for one system deployed, lots of balancers, front ends, databases, and so on. But we use this for uh, testing and development environments inside, uh, uh, inside Yandex uh, because uh, testings are, testing and development environments are usually smaller than production environments and uh, uh, they consist of like 30 or 40, can consist of like 30 or 40 nodes. And this thing allowed us to don't bother about how we create this, how we destroy this, because all the retention time uh, algorithms also working. Uh, Jenkins will, when the job finish, uh, Jenkins will kill the slave after retention time goes, goes by. Uh, so uh, we do not bother about anything else uh, except uh, like uh, scripting jobs and saying what we would like to do because we have a huge cloud and we have Jenkins, we have a compound slave plugin. So this all is already, as I already said, it's uh, in open source. You can go to GitHub to see how it's created, uh, how it's done. You can go to Wiki. Uh, late, late, later we'll do a better uh, documentation of this plugin. So I hope you find this useful and maybe I'll invite you for collaboration. You can contact us anytime you want because we also have other different plugins we've already created like Debian Package Builder and so on. Uh, so if you're interested, just contact me and I'll help you somehow. So seems that all. Thank you very much for coming to the very last presentation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.